Hey everyone, so today we are going to make a tutorial that is going to be a simulation again and it's going to be a growth simulation where we want to grow something on an existing object. So this idea came from a project we recently did where we wanted to have sort of like moss growing on a gin bottle um, kind of illustrating nature and the ingredients in the bottle. So in this tutorial we are going to use geometry nodes and we are going to use the proximity node function that we can use within geometry nodes. So it is a bit complex but I also think that it is a really fast and easy way to get really interesting results within Blender. So yeah, let's just dive in. So in this scene, I have just a bottle with a label um, that's something that is highly realistic, uh, mod modeled. Um, didn't want to spend too much time on it uh, because this is more about the effect that we can show and not about the object. Uh, in this tutorial, you guys can use this effect for whatever you want um, so but yeah but we have this this bottle and we have just a simple light set up and a camera that uh, is panning towards the the bottle as the growth is happening and we have just a simple two light uh, set up here with a strong key light and a backlighting uh, for the bottle and then also just a huge backdrop with uh, a strong light on it and a uh, um yeah just a, a, a like kind of hdri uh, with a brown photo studio found on hdri heaven um yeah just giving some reflections and adding a bit more realism but yeah let's just dive straight into the proximity node setup and our growth uh, tutorial so i'll just switch back to in this view and um, yeah let's let's add some some geometry nodes to this object so i'll go into the geometry setup and um, in here you can see that we we have our bottle right here and um, i'll just move this so it's easier to see so the kind of effect that we want to have is we want to have our grass growing on the surface on the faces of our bottle um, we wanted to have like an effect, proximity effect to relate every in relation to another object. So we need to have that other object uh, within our geometry. But first of all, let's just set up the the um, the first geometry node. So I will choose our wine bottle and I will add the geometry node. So right in here we have our geometry. And um, yeah, we just have a, an input, which is our uh, bottle and an output. So when I remove this, you can see we lose our our wine bottle. Um, so yeah, I wanna, I know I wanna distribute kind of the grass on the bottle. So we need to distribute something. And when I search for distribute, we can distribute points on faces. So this sounds like something we would use. And I just plug it in right on the on the line. And you can see straight away that we have a, a few of these uh, points distributed on our mesh. Um, the only thing is that we don't see our bottle. Uh, it has been removed and that's because the, the points have like taken over the, uh, the wine bottle. But we can fix this easily with a join geometry. And when I plug this in and take our original geometry we will get our bottle back so and i'll just move this up move this out of the way just to simplify stuff for you guys um but yeah and um we want to control what it is that we distribute so we want to instance um yeah so to speak instances to these points another instance to these points oh, uh, I'll just search for points and instances 
on points. And when I put this in, it removed, but this is because we don't yet have an instance in relation to the distribution of points on the faces. So if I just type in, let's say, a cube, and I and I drop this one in here into the instances, you can see that we now will have, let's, let me just scale it down, we will have a lot of cubes distributed on our bottle. And yeah, so what we can do now is that we basically have our setup and uh, yeah, what is what you what you want is that you also want to control like the direction. Right now it's a cube, so it really doesn't matter. But when we use grass, it, it will kind of be a bit important. So I will use an uh, Euler rotate and put this into the rotation of our emphasis and distribute points with this. And now you can see that what is happening and it's the same effect as if I have this one, this one just gives a bit more um, control and you can see why later. But it just takes, let me just snap out of this, it just takes the object that we have and kind of rotate it out from the normal uh, of the faces. So this is just the realistic way that it that it that it should be. So yeah, but this is basically our our setup, and uh, I can remove this down here, and just take this one down here. And yeah, so so now we have this this setup with our geometry nodes, and uh, we want to create now the kind of effect. So we we kind of have our points distributed. Um, so what I want to add now is the kind of proximity to 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 the to the uh, object, and uh, to kind of have the effect we need to add a. I'll just put this on back on. Turn that off. I will create a UV sphere, and this UV sphere will basically be our proximity object that is going to uh, affect when the points on our other grass is showing. And I will just start by displaying this as bounds and as a sphere. And I will turn off the visibility for the renders and for the camera view. So now we cannot, we won't see it in inside of the, uh, the renders. And um, yeah, so when we go back now, we just have to create the, the effect. So we need to have this object be kind of like the one that determines the effect. So we can just, oh, let me just move this out of my collection. We can just move, just remember to take this one. We can just take our sphere and drag it into our geometry node. And we now have it inside of here. And I'll set it to relative so that it works. And then we just need to build our proximity node tree. So I will add a position. And we need also the geometry proximity node. And a distance uh, or a vector is called a vector math. And I'll set this to a distance. So it is in relation to the distance of our sphere. So put in the geometry, set the precision to the top and the precision to the lower here. And we need a math node right now. And we need to set it to multiply add add clamping and put on the value here and we need it to grow so we can just set it to one and then minus one so it kind of uh, it's out of uh, <laughs> so it doesn't exist and then gradually existing up to one and we can also add a flow curve to determine our um yeah set it to the factor and we just need one more multiply and add in the value, turn off the cabling, 
and then we need to combine all of this but then x y z so we need to put in the value for all of this because this is this is going into the scale of our object our instances um, so not our object but our instances point is cubic uh, cubes so to say so i will just put this into the scale and now you can see a lot of things happening right now um this is mostly due to the kind of flow curve that we created here so i found out that the reason that we need to have this sort of effect is because we actually want to cre uh, determine the like sort of fall off that we have so i can go into the cube and i can just you know um I can just scale our cube down even more. Oh. And now you can see this. We sort of have the effect now of these cube instances, maybe it's easier to see here, appearing when I drag our sphere. So this is exactly the kind of effect that we want to have because we want to, you know, uh, determine based on like an animated uh, location of our sphere when these sort of instances are going to appear so yeah so this is basically the setup and and what you can do now is that you can just add in anything else uh, that you might find interesting instead of the cube so I have a grass collection that I'm going to drag in um just uh, 3d scans that i have found online and i'm going to add in the geometry into the instances instead and separate the children and reset the children and relative and pick instances so right now you might not be able to see this because of the scale but i can just multiply it down here let's say 10,000, and you can see that we now have a lot of grass growing on uh, our bottle but they're turning like they're all turning up they they are starting from the face and they're all going kind of the right direction but there's something that just seems kind of not realistic about it and this is where i i i found that using the rotated euler work in my case i can change it to local and if i just change the kind of different axes we can move um, let's say from the top view we can, we can kind of rotate our um, yeah our grass the way we want so I just found this one to be nice turn it up a bit and yeah now it's kind of growing up uh, upwards on this uh, kind of object an old wine bottle but uh, it doesn't really look that pleasing because um, that's just sticking out randomly and we don't really have any like sort of it's not that much and if I just move this one up a bit you can see that yeah it's not it's, it doesn't quite achieve what we want but we can just really add a, you know put up the density of lights or just randomly let's set this to three or three some sort of different seating and um yeah let's just try with a uh, hundred thousand yeah it's okay we could do better one thousand okay now it's starting to look kind of cool i'll put this up a bit and you can see the effects starting really to start to show off right now but i think we can add even more so i'll just add two thousand yeah exactly so but but your viewpoint might start to to be a bit laggy when this happens uh, depending on the computer that you're using uh, if i go back to the layout you can better see what we have created so you can take the sphere and you can basically sort of animating this position and the about the, uh, the location of the sphere uh, to create the sort of reveal effect uh, that you really want uh, so yeah so so it's all and you can scale this one down too and 
kind of just experiment a lot with like this sort of different kind of variations that you might think will work for your instance and you can you know make it way larger and you know devour the entire bottle uh, if there's something that you yeah, you would find cool um, yeah so you can just experiment uh, experiment a, lo a lot with this and uh, yeah I just this is an effect that's just really nice and it looks great when 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 used um, and when you have these sort of grassy uh, leaves or an, another thing instanced it just looks really natural and if I go into the the render view you can just see here we got also the reflections in the bottle um, you might like that or not but you can see if I just you know dial it around a bit here um, we kind of get this sort of really cool effect um, yeah and I actually think that our mesh could even be like using even more um, oh yeah now it's lagging a bit <laughs> so that was what I meant like the sort of power it also needs when you have a lot of density within your mesh but uh, but the effect is really cool and you can see here after the the uh, the animation that I rendered out um, so yeah so just go experiment with this kind of effect and try it on different kind of objects and with the different lighting and you know it's all about the the experimentation and the little things so so this is just a simple setup of the proximity node um, there's a lot of other people out there that have done a proximity node setups also on YouTube you can find really nice tutorials and it's just a, a great node setup let me just go back it's just a, a really simple node setup in some ways um, that can have a huge effect on the thing that you're trying to achieve so yeah uh, I think that's all for me today um, so yeah I hope you learned something out of this and can see it apply to your projects it is definitely something that can be used in the commercial space in many ways um, proximity is something that's been using that yeah that's being used quite a lot so um, so yeah and uh, just remember to leave a comment if you, if you want to and like and subscribe and uh, yeah, see you for the next one. Hey.